Hi guys, in this video I will be talking to you about protection magic so I'll be, we'll be looking into the metaphysical properties of certain protective crystals and gemstones. I will probably talk a bit about the protective qualities or metaphysical qualities of some of the metals as well which pair well with the crystals. Hello witches and pagans, welcome back to the Ruben Lyron Healer channel. And welcome back to the protection magic series. As you can see I've brought a lot of my crystals out for you to see. We'll be telling you a bit about each of them as we progress through the video. I'm wearing lots of my crystals so there's some wire wrapped crystal rings and stuff like that so yeah metals often pair well with crystals and they add their own energies to them as well. In this installation of the Protection Magic series, I will be talking about protection magic with crystals. As many of you may know, I've, if you may have seen some of the other videos, I have lots of other videos on clear quartz and selenite, the various crystals and gemstones, so feel free to check them out if you're a fan of crystals and you've not already seen them already. Also, as this is part of the series, if you are interested in protection magic, please check out the other three videos, and there shall be more to come after this as well. So please stick around and hit the subscribe button. Aha, so that's what we're supposed to be talking about. Thank you, spirit guides. All right. So in this video on protection magic I will be talking about some of the metaphysical properties of some of the some of crystals and other minerals such as metals. I will also be showing you how to do create a protective crystal grid so please stick around to see how that happens and how to do it if you've not done it before or even if you have done it before. I'm sure my way may be differ from your own way or the way that you know already so please stick around and have have a look at that so without much further ado i'm going to get into the video got some notes with me here because as you can see there's a lot of crystals here so i want to speak about as much of them as possible so i'll before we get into the individual crystal properties, I want to just say a few words on crystals. All right, so when it comes to crystals, before you use before you use any crystals in your protection magic, I would suggest that if if the crystals are new to you, especially if you've just bought them or been gifted them, then do do cleanse them. Certain crystals you can cleanse by passing them through running water, especially if it is fresh running water, like if you're cleansing them in the stream or a river or something like that, safely of course. And you may also do smoke cleansing with them, so smoke clearing on the crystals or on, on your whole house, including the crystals as well. So if if you are unsure about smoke clearing, please do check out the last video, number three in the Protection Magic series, the Herbal Magic um, video, because I did give a demonstration on how you can do a basic smoke clearing in that video. Aha, so yeah, I'm just going to list a few crystals which I've written down you shouldn't really use running water to cleanse them because it can damage the crystals so celestite selenite lodestone hematite halite lapidolite malachite labradorite galena mica pyrite obsidian turquoise angelite moldavite tangerine quartz so be discerning about which crystals you use the water method of cleansing with because certain crystals with prolonged water contact they can dissolve or be 
broken because certain crystals are quite a quite certain crystals are quite delicate in their composition if that is the correct word so next is charging crystals so to charge crystals you can do this in various ways so you can charge them by placing them on the charging plate so if you've got an organite charging plate if you've got a selenite charging plate certain crystals such as selenite are really good for charging other crystals so if you have a selenite charging plate then you may place your crystals onto them crystals so this crystal here this is selenite so or satin spa so it is a beautiful crystal I, I love the way it just it just looks so magical also the energy is really high on, on that crystal that end it is really high and pure energies and that is why it can cleanse other crystals and that's why it doesn't require cleansing itself of course this is it's a good job but it doesn't require cleansing because this is one of the crystals selenite which can be damaged with water placing them on a charging plate so that is one method of charging crystals you can also charge them in direct sunlight or moonlight. There's other methods you can use on crystals before you use them in your magic, such as programming a crystal, but I won't be talking about that today. I'll be talking about such, thing, such methods as programming crystals in my online courses, which I shall be offering within the next few months once I've finalised all of that. So the six gemstones in particular that don't require cleansing, so I told you one of them already. So the first one was selenite. Selenite does not require cleansing. Although some people would argue, if you're one of them people, if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I cleanse mine or I cleanse my crystal, blah, 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 because I... I can see why some people would want to cleanse it because, and that's fair enough if you want to cleanse it, you can, I'm just saying that it doesn't necessarily need it as much as some of the other crystals. So, <clears throat> so the six gemstones that don't require cleansing, so the, the next one is citrine, so citrine is this crystal here. So this is some citrine stones. So that's a Kundalini citrine scepter or wand and that's just a citrine point. We've got selenite, citrine, kyanite. Kyanite is the other one that does not require cleansing. So this is a piece of blue kyanite. So these crystals that I'm telling you about, that they've all got really high energies, so that is why they don't necessarily require cleansing, because they vibe so high that the any negative energies, they cannot exist around them. They'd just be cleansed or transmuted by the crystal. Okay. So, Kyanite Super 7, I've not got a piece of that with me, but Google it. Or, if I can, if I remember, I will put a link to, to a place where you can see a piece of Super 7. Tektite. I do have some of that, but I don't have it here with me, which is annoying. Tektite is a meteorite from out of space, so I think Moldavite is classed as a tektite by some people. If I'm if I'm wrong, please let me know. But I think you do class Moldavite as a as a tektite as well. So, there's Auralite 23. I do have a piece of that here. So, Auralite 23. So, it looks kind of like... It looks like 
just amethyst really so it, it also looks quite similar to the um agate necklace that i'm wearing so all the like 23 most of it has like a red point as well but this piece doesn't have a red point okay all the like 23 so those are the six crystals that do not require cleansing. Da, 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 da. So also, crystals, they do pair well with herbs. So certain pairings such as selenite and rosemary, they're both very clean, cleansing energies. So they pair really well. So they're both protective and cleansing. So let's see what else... So, on my list, I've got Black Tourmaline, Black Tourmaline and Palo Santo. So, Black Tourmaline and Palo Santo, they, uh, they are good pairings as well for protection. Because Black Tourmaline, it's a very special crystal, because, especially in the protection magic because it black tourmaline that absorbs like negative energy or it kind of it kind of blocks and absorbs like it kind of it blocks bad vibes bad energies and what it cannot block it absorbs into itself so blood blood bad energies are taken into the gemstone so this gemstone requires regular cleansing. Most of the protective crystals require a lot of cleansing or regular cleansing. There's fluorite as well. I've got some purple fluorite and bl blue green fluorite. So, purple fluorite, blue green fluorite. So, with fluorite, the interesting thing about fluorite is bring you some peace of mind. So it helps to, it's helpful in cases of sleep paralysis. And also, fluorite is, has been used to trap demons or negative entities in the stones as well. Yeah, that is some of, one of the legends and folklore that fluorite will trap negative entities within it. Now. Crystal circle. Onyx is also said to do that as well. Black Onyx, I believe. I don't have any of that, but Black Onyx is... It's... <laughs> you can't really tell m much difference from Black Onyx and Black Obsidian. Because it just looks like a black gemstone. Black onyx. So with fluorite. Fluorite is very protective. It helps to, like some of the other gemstones, it helps to protect you against EMFs as well. I've got a list of certain gemstones which are good for magic and witchcraft. Although, what I find quite interesting is a lot of these gemstones which are specific to protection magic they're also I mean sorry a lot of these gemstones which are listed as being very useful in magic in general magic and witchcraft they are also very protective stones such as Labradorite, Bloodstone, Brown Jasper, I've got a piece of that somewhere here, so Brown Jasper, that was, that is, was one of my favourites when I was first starting out, so Brown Jasper, what else, what is on the list, so Snowflake Obsidian as well, so I've got a piece of this over here, Snowflake Obsidian, if you can see that, I hope you can see that good. Okay. 
I'll I'm gonna show you some of I'll show you some of the crystals again when I bring the camera over here. All right. So what else is on that list? So Merlinite. So this here, what I'm wearing is a piece of mystic Merlinite. So again, it's a very magical stone and it's very protective at the same time. Um, opal. And that's a piece of opal in my ring there. I don't know if you saw that. But um, also moonstone. Although moonstone is a quite soft and nurturing energy, it is quite protective as well. Because it, it kind of taps into the goddess energy moonstone so when especially especially on the full moon using a piece of moonstone or a piece of selenite they both have quite similar energies because moonstones and selenite they both are connected with the goddess because they have goddess energy connected with them obsidian so it's Showed you a piece of snowflake obsidian. I also have a black obsidian skull here. So skulls, they're brilliant. They're brilliant for all kinds of magic, such as um, such as self-exploratory magic, path working, that sort of thing. But they're also good for protection. So this is a bl black obsidian skull, so I really love that. So ob about obsidian, so obsidian comes from lava. There's also a patchetia as well. A patchetia is similar to obsidian and it also has connections to the Apache tribe, hence where it gets its name. But it's Apache Tears and Obsidian, they're both very protective stones. Let's see what the book I've got 101 power, power crystals. I'll see if I can find a little bit more about Apache Tear or Obsidian. Obsidian is a shamanic tool for removing blo blockages and debris from the past. It blocks psychic attack or harmful intentions by providing a shield for the aura. Gentle Apache Tears are the most suitable obsidian to carry for this purpose. Okay, that is kind of supports what I was saying. So, place harnessing the power, place obsidian at your feet, visualize cards passing from each foot, going through the earth star, entwining deep into the earth, anchoring you during turmoil. So that isn't specific to protection magic, that last bit, but it's the a useful little exercise. So power crystals is Judy Hall. She's a really great author on crystals. She's the same author from the best-selling book, The Crystal Bible. So if you're a fan of crystals, then do check out some of her work. She's got tons of other books as well. It's interesting when you... When you get crystals carved into animal shapes, because then you have the protective energy of the animal, as well as the metaphysical properties of the gemstones. So this beautiful specimen here, this is Malachite. Malachite carved lion. Malachite is a very protective energy, but there's something more to malachite malachite is quite a subtle energy and it's kind of like a magnifying glass so having having malachite around it brings it brings out issues so basically whatever energy is around the stone it then intensifies that energy and brings it out if you're feeling great, then the malachite will make you feel even more great. <laughs> but if you're feeling a bit, if you're feeling a bit temperamental or 
grief stricken or upset in any way and you're handling Malachi or wearing Malachi, then the Malachi is kind of going to amplify those energies and kind of bring them out so that you deal with them, kind of. So it's just bear that in mind because it is a beautiful protective stone but it, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it to people who have who who have big issues going on because it is going to bring those issues out for you to deal with them although if if you're one of those people who are living your best life then have grab some malachite because that is only going to intensify the those sorts of feelings and thoughts so yeah that is the the pros and cons are the good things and bad things about malachite so over here we also have a jade so this is all a jade carved in as a wolf form so i got that one especially to honor my patron goddess hecate so yeah i'm sorry i <laughs> I'm practically mention her in every video, but she's a very important goddess, and especially when all my videos are about magic, she's like the goddess of magic and queen of magic, so how can I not mention her? The next crystal that I've got here is Elite Noble Shungite, so this is a pyramid, so Elite Noble Shungite is amazing. Actually, some people actually call it the Miracle Stone because it's a very healing crystal as well as very protective so it's a win-win really if you're doing some energy work or if you're meditating just simply holding the crystal in your hands or placing it on the table in front of you or on an altar or a shrine in front of you that this the energy from the Elite Noble Shungite is going to create a protective field around you. So that is useful to know. Also, just a simple thing to bear in mind is that colours, the colour of gemstones is very important. So if you've got a black stone, then that is going to protect Black is a very protective energy. Just simply wearing the colour black, as I like to do, that protects you from negative energies. So keeping black gemstones around, such as Elite Noble Shungite, then you are calling in that protective energy. Okay, it's the same as with the black tourmaline or the... Or the obsidian. Oh, so actually over here I have I have another piece of obsidian here. So I made this spear sort of wire wrapped crystals and the ob an obsidian spear. So I just I love it. It's my intention for creating this was to to be able to just if you've if you've seen his dark materials as a TV program I've read the books by Philip Pullman as well it just reminds me of like the subtle knife so just I, I my thoughts in creating this was just to be able to like cut through the subtle cut through the astral plane basically and just just cut through energies and just remove stuff that's not needed but as i was saying obsidian is very protective so if the the arrowheads you, you can you can find the arrowheads like in any metaphysical or crystal shop really I see them around a lot 
I, I really like this one because this one is a massive arrowhead. You usually find them a lot smaller. Okay. So moving on. So another Shiva Lingam. So, so Shiva Lingam is a very sacred stone. So this is the Shiva Lingam. But it's very protective as well. Probably because of its connection with the deity Shiva. Shiva is a very powerful and creator, creator god. So let me flip through the book, see what it says about Shiva Lingam. So here it says, the goddess Parvati fashioned the first Lingam from sand to worship Lord Shiva. Sand represents primal energy, the primal element of earth, the phallus, the primeval power of the male god, the soft texture, the wise feminine goddess energy. The stone embodies the wisdom of the deities brought to earth. A lingam also symbolises the cosmic egg from which creation arose. According to another Indian legend, Shiva battled a fellow god over who had the greatest power. When Shiva won, a lingam appeared in the sky. Therefore, lingam symbolises ultimate power, both destroyer and renewer. Shiva represents the cycle of life, death and rebirth. A lingam teaches this too will pass and aids you in moving on. Additionally, Shiva is the god of mercy and compassion. Add a lingam to a household altar for protection and to attract love into your home. So that's the Shiva lingam. So, have I got any Amazonite? I've got turquoise. Right, so let's see what it says about. So here we have a piece of turquoise. So this is rough version. You don't usually see it looking like this. It's usually more polished and pretty. But this is a nice piece of rough turquoise. Okay, so let's have a quick look to see what it says about that. Turquoise stole its colour from the sky and represents humanity's cosmic origins. In the language of gemstones, turquoise represents cheerfulness of the soul. Universally, it is regarded as a bringer of peace and good luck. It was considered a potent antidote to the evil eye and a fortunate stone for actors and singers. An Arabic proverb states, a turquoise given by a loving hand carries with it happiness and good fortune. Also, there's also a picture of what the tumbled variety of turquoise can look like. Often these days it gets mis misrepresented because, because turquoise is so popular, it is imitated with howlite so they dye howlite which is a white stone they dye it blue so then it looks like this stone so watch out for that smoky quartz is another one so smoky quartz smoky quartz is an excellent stone for protection and it's a very grounding stone as well so it's a good stone for anyone who has fears or worries. So if you, if you're like new to the craft or if you're new to newly have, having a spiritual awakening or something along those lines, if if you're like worried about how things are progressing or how things may progress and having a bit of smoky quartz around it can really ground you and it, it can really protect you from those fears so it's a really nice stone and it helps you to to trust in the universe basically because you you're fully protected and that's 
what smoky quartz is good for is carnelian. So carnelian, wow, carnelian. It is sometimes called fire agate as well. So that is another stone that I'm going to mention actually, agate. But talking specifically about carnelian, carnelian for me, the first thing I think of is the goddess Sekhmet. So Sekhmet, she is a fiery deity, so she's unrivaled, like, for her power and ferocity. She's a very ferocious lioness goddess. So this is... It, she's like a very root chakra ba based goddess, so she's got oh, sacral chakra as well. So she's a very sexual and powerful deity. So th these are <laughs> similar to the powers that this stone carnelian possesses. It's very protective and it helps you tap into your own inner power so it's very good for that so i'll see what it says in the book about carnelian although i do know that carnelian what is often worn by muslims in ring form similar to mine well mine's carnelian ring so i'm wearing it for a similar reason because it's very good for protection so muslims they often wear rings of carnelian because they believe it, it it averts the evil eye so that is why it's popular in the middle east probably in some parts of europe as well like turkey so carnelian so that's another beautiful picture of carnelian there. So it says, In the Arabic world, the name of Alit engraved on the carnelian protected the wearer from harm. In legend says the Prophet Muhammad wore one mounted in silver. Carnelian stimulates courage and action. It restores motivation, energises the soul body and helps turn dreams into realities. With this stone, you can work an act of truly outrageous magic that transmogrifies the mundane world. For instance, use it to successfully apply for a dream job for which you are not qualified, where you dramatically transform other people's lives. Ca Traditionally, Carnelian protected against envy. Eastern belief said that if you envied anyone's possessions or wealth, your thoughts caused him to lose what you craved. This is useful, karmic insight into the power of envy. Meganimus, carnelian helps you be grateful for what you have and give thanks for the good fortune of others, reinforcing universal abundance. That's interesting. So, carnelian is a brilliant stone. One of the reasons I, I love it is mainly because of the goddess Sekhmet. And also because of my Lyran, my Lyran connection. What else have we... Is there any other important crystals? Let me have a quick look here. So I've, I've got some Lapis Lazuli there. Beautiful protective stone. Beloved by the ancient Egyptians. There's some Hematite here. So that is very grounding and protective. So that's similar to smoky quartz really but very grounding and there is fool's gold or iron pyrite so iron pyrite that is another one that is a it's another grounding stone but it's also protective so it kind of it's another one that taps into the the similar sorts of chakras or the any lower energy centers. It is one of the gemstones such as shungite, shungite and iron pyrite. 
and smoky quartz actually a lot of these gemstones they also help to protect you from emf frequencies so emfs are electromagnetic frequencies so they they're harmful energies often that they are often harmful energies which come from electronics such as mobile phones internets wireless routers 5g towers so I'm not going to get into that, <laughs> but this is why I love Sh Elite Noble Shungai and I am Pyrite and Organite because they help to protect you from EMF frequencies, which nobody needs. There's my emerald. So emerald, right, I could, I could, like... Carnelian, I could talk about Next emerald we, forever. We have some emerald here. So emeralds, emeralds are all about protecting the heart and protecting the emotions and protecting our relationships. They're also thought to be like the, the stone of immortality. It's all to do with longevity and as it has the connection with the heart and relationships, it's also like a stone of fidelity. So, the, carrying the stone helps to keep your lover true to you as well. But it's a very beautiful stone. I will be talking. I will be talking about the Emerald Order in in a future video at some point. Because the Emerald Order ties in with like the Emerald Flame, which is similar to the Violet Flame, but emerald coloured. <laughs> uh, there's also there's also tourmalinated quartz. So tourmalinated quartz. This is black tourmaline which occurs within clear quartz. Or oh, it occurs within quartz. This this particular stone isn't very clear. Although you, you can get it where I did have some before where the stone is actually like like clear quartz with the black inflections in it. Although I think I used those stones in some my some of my organites, so this is my <laughs> new newer piece which I've wire wrapped. Just just to help to boost its protective powers in by wrapping crystals in copper it helps to amplify their abilities so amplify their metaphysical properties and depending on the metals that you use so if if you're using copper like i do copper is healing and it it's a conductor in it it helps to amplify the energies, so that is why copper is so useful. That's why a lot of people wear the copper bracelets, because it help wearing copper helps to increase blood circulation, which is really good for the for our health and well being. So other metals you can pair them with is gold in this earring here i have some gold filled wire you can't really see it very well but on, on this clear quartz here let me keep it still on this clear quartz earring that i wire, wire wrapped here there is some gold filled wire so gold Gold is all about tapping into the sun's energy or god energy. Whereas silver is tapping into goddess energy and moon energy. So, I can't get my earring back in now. <laughs> so yeah, silver. A lot of people love silver. I love silver. I'm not wearing much of it now. I've got my ring, which is I have oxidised my silver ring, opal and silver. Um, so silver, 
yeah, Silver's just a lot more magical and a lot of people, a lot of people favour gold, partly because it exudes wealth, like gold has always been sought after for thousands of years, maybe more, probably more. Although silver, silver is less precious because it's, it's not as rare as gold, although it has a beautiful energy. I, I prefer silver to gold any day. And plus with it, with it being less rare, you can wear, wear lots of it, like, I, I'd really like to just cover myself in silver and crystals and whatever. But yeah, silver is just a really nice energy. And it pairs well with crystals and gemstones. Like a lot of people buy birthstone jewellery. And majority of the time that, are, that the, the birthstones are set in silver. Another one that I've not mentioned here is um, Ruby. So Ruby, 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 Ruby. <laughs> I get that sang, sang at me a lot with my name being called Ruben. Oh dear me. But anyhow, <laughs> Ruby. Ah, and there's Garnet as well. Where's Garnet? So... These two stones, Ruby and Garnet, they're both very protective in, in a similar way. Ruby is, again, that's calling in, like, longevity. So, longevity, well-being, and good health. Again, it's connecting with the heart. So, love and... All um, protecting the heart from everything which seeks to harm it. So yeah, that's ruby, and then there's garnet. So again, this is similar to the one. What one was I just talking about before? Oh yeah, it's quite similar to the emerald because again we have like um relationships so people who wear emerald so people who have like em not emerald sorry people who have wear garnet say if you have a garnet in your wedding ring or if you have a, an item of jewelry which you wear um it just helps to promote fidelity and love and happiness so that is two of the red gemstones ruby and garnet atlantisite so this is atlantisite here so Atlantisite, this is a really beautiful energy, especially for star seeds. So Atlantisite, it's it's kind of in the name there. Atlantisite, it connects you with the energies of Atlantis, and more than that, it collects connects you to galactic frequencies. So if you're top, top way, whichever star family you feel a strong connection to it will help connect you with those so whether it's Arcturian, Lyran, Pleiadian, etc etc Atlantisite connects with the star family and also the it, it helps to call in their protection it's just a lovely energy. If you can get some Atlantisite, do get some and 
have a good hold of it and let it talk to you and just feel the energy. It, it feels very different to a lot of the other gemstones. So if you're just used to like the regular stuff, like you, if you have some of the basic crystals like amethyst, hematite, um, clear quartz, they're all lovely, but something like this, Atlantisite or Numite, they're just very different energies. So I'll tell you a bit about Numite quickly. So Numite is the sorcerer's stone and I don't mean the philosopher's stone when I say the sorcerer's stone it's like the stone of witchcraft and sorcery and necromancy so Numite is 5 billion years old I believe it's like one of the oldest gemstones on the planet so I, I believe it arrived via some meteors or something but I just remember that it's the the oldest gemstone like billions and billions of years old but it connects you to like the dark goddess like Kali Ma, Hecate, um, Morgan Le Fay, the Kalia Carly, oh well yeah I mentioned Carly. so yeah it's just a very expansive stone it, and it's very protective of course as well so yeah that is new might so if you can get hold of some of those then do try them out because they are lots of fun and they'd pair well together actually Um, as well as tourmalinated quartz, another good quartz stone to have is rutile quartz. So rutile quartz is this. So rutile is clear quartz and it has like golden hairs in it. So with, with it being rutile quartz, so rutile quartz in tourmalinated quartz they are both supposed to be like stronger so they'd have more protective energy because they they are clear quartz but they have the, the additions of other minerals inside them so they help to amplify so yes they're very protective stones Okay. Um, the last one that I'm going to tell you about is banded agate. So what I'm wearing here, so this is banded agate. Okay. Oh, there it is. So it says here, some of the most ancient artifacts were created from banded agate including a 5,000-year-old Mesopotamian amulet inlaid with minute golden writing that called on the power of the planetary god Marduk, who is connected or equated to Jupiter, to protect the wearer from all evil. An even older votive offering, a ceremonial axe carved from banded agate, was dedicated to the fearsome weather god a dad who threw thunderbolts and lightning. The, the Egyptians used banded agate for amulets to protect their heads. Almost certainly one of the stones in the breastplate of the high priest, it perhaps symbolised the all-seeing eye of God. Banded agates, were, resem they re resemble an eye, therefore they were considered especially effective against the evil eye so they help to repel the evil eye that is a picture of banded agate so that's another a 
do have a piece of that somewhere. So, in the book it says, Place a banded agate on your third eye to remove ties to any authority figure who has disempowered you or whom you have outgrown. Okay, so that's interesting. I'm just going to tell you now, there's a few methods for using all of these protective crystals which I've mentioned. Method one is, method one, draw a five-pointed star or the pentagram or pentacle which is the pentagram with a circle around it. Draw or print out a five-pointed star or pentacle. Place protective crystals at each of the points. Set your intention. Concentrate on them. Then relax. And then when you're ready, you can relax and let the crystals continue to work their magic and carry your intention. The next method is to wear or carry gemstones. Wearing crystals is the easiest way that you can utilise crystal magic. I've got a few of my gemstone gemstone amulets over here. The black agate in clear quartz. Pendant there. There is a carite. Carite, aventurine. I've not mentioned aventurine yet. There's a sapphire pendant there. There is a turquoise pendant here. So I mentioned turquoise earlier. So, the, basically what I'm saying to you is that one of the easiest ways that you can work protection magic and the easiest ways to get any be benefits from crystals and gemstones is to wear them. So, like me, I wear gemstone rings, gemstone bracelets, they're a favourite. That's quite popular, lots of people do that. Even even if you're, you're not so openly spiritual or witchy lots of people seem to be on the trend of wearing gemstone bracelets maybe maybe not as many as this but they have a few so here i have some lapis lazuli there's lapis lazuli and carnelian there is hematite there's black tourmaline there's um carnelian and there's clear quartz so all of those all of those are protective stones. On the other side I have Mystic Merlinite and I have Tiger's Eye as well. Also, like tapping into the Violet Flame as well. So it, it helps to transmute any, any negative energies. Purple is... That's why Amethyst is so be beautiful and important as well. Amethyst, so here I have some aura amethyst, amethyst aura, I believe it's called. So, amethyst aura, so that is amethyst which has been fused, had metals fused on it in a laboratory. And then there's aura light amethyst. Or Aura Light 23. And then there's just a regular piece of Amethyst. So all of these stones, I've not talked much about Amethyst. But Amethyst is known as like the New Age stones. Most people who have come across crystals, they will have came across Amethyst. Because it's one of the most popular. Um, so basically it's a very New Age stone but it is very protective as well. So it helps you to facilitate your spiritual abilities, so your psychic abilities. It helps you to tap into that and it protects you while you do while doing so. So amethyst is a good one. So the method number three for using protect protection magic crystals is to wear and carry 
the gemstone. So if if you do not, if you don't have like gemstone jewelry, don't worry. You can just pop crystals in your pockets. Like <laughs> there is a funny meme somewhere that oh, I hope I can find it because I will post it onto the video. It shows you it's a pair of jeans and it tells you tells you that that is there's a, a tiny a tiny pocket in a pair of jeans and it says that is what the pocket is made for to hold crystals so yeah i just thought that was funny but yeah that's what put as many protective crystals in your pockets as you like put it in your purses put it in if you're a, if you a girl woman or girl then put it in your bra <laughs> if you if you want to as well i know my sister does um so method number 4 spell cast with the gemstones so use utilize them in in your spell work so whether it's using a crystal wand, this is a black phantom quartz. So whether it's using a crystal wand, here's my shell wand that I made. So clear quartz, and th there's a lapis lazuli wand here. So use wand when you're casting your spells as well. And over here I have my. Organite wand, so that has Lemurian crystal on one end, and it has Brazilian clear quartz on the other end. Kyanite clear quartz, sapphire in the middle, and Larimar on the end here. So, yes, yeah, so that's my Organite slash crystal wand. Let's see if I can... Oh, I found me Lemurian. Right, so another one that I wanted to talk to you about is Scarlet Temple Lemurian Seed Quartz. So that is a bit of a mouth mouthful. Scarlet Temple Lemurian Quartz. Or it's also been called... The simpler way, or the simpler name for it is also strawberry quartz or strawberry lemurian seed crystal so lemurian quartz is a very beautiful gemstone it's it helps to promote higher consciousness it helps to bring you information from the akashic records about your past lives and it helps you to relearn old old skills and just to tap into other timelines but the relevance for this video for the relevance of this video Lemurian Quartz because it is not just regular Lemurian Quartz I'm sure regular Lemurian Quartz will be protective as well because it's a crystal. Crystals can be, they can be programmed to do any function. But specifically because it's a red or strawberry coloured piece of quartz. So it's natural and the red colour comes from iron iron deposits within the, the crystal so iron is a very protective element so in in folklore iron is often used against witches and fairies and just any magical folk it helps to protect them from mischievous magics or malicious magics but that is why strawberry or scarlet temple 
Lemurian Quartz is a very protective stone. So just holding it or just brushing your thumb against it or your fingers or your nails and just because they have grooves in them so the grooves are what makes L Lemurian Quartz so special but I, I, I could just I'm gonna do a video a complete video on Lemurian Quartz because Lemurian Quartz is an amazing gemstone but I just wanted to add that in there so it is specifically good for protection because of the deposits of the red colouring which is the iron so as you can see on the back there's like little dark red splotches as well so yeah that is the Lemurian quartz or the strawberry Lemurian seed quartz okay so I'll pop that back over there All right without further ado I feel like I've been talking your ear off so I'm just going to go in with the activating the crystal grid we've got over here so let's do this So this here is the snowflake obsidian, there's some aqua aura next to it. There is some um, ruby and zoestite next to that. Lapis lazuli, celestite, hematite, iron pyrite. There is my elonite wand there, which I shall be using in a moment. There's a Shiva Lingam here. That's a Shiva Lingam. And as you can see, it has little spots on it as well, which are interesting. So over here we have the turquoise again. Kyanite, ruby. There is some iron here. Which is interesting. Activating, activating the crystal grid. So think of your intention. So basically, with the crystal grid, activating the crystal grid, you need to. Usually, you have. You have. You have the crystals in some form of sacred geometry so this is Metatron's cube so then you have you can have all of the gemstones the same so you can use all of the same crystal or gemstone or you can have different if you like as well so here I've got dragonstone so dragonstone is protective it, well, it's kind of in the name. Dragon energy is very protective. And then inside, in the inside circle, there is carnelian. So I told you about carnelian. So that is protective as well because it averts the evil eye. And it has connections with Sekhmet. And the Lyrens as well. And in the middle... In the middle, you you usually have a point crystal. So this is I'm trying to think of the proper name for for it. I can't think. But yeah, 
So you, you usually have a point crystal in the middle of the crystal grid. So without further ado, we'll do it. So you just simply repeat a pattern. So I'm going to go from this stone here into the middle to this stone here and vice versa. So I'm going to work on the dragon stones first in the grid. So watch me do that. And then I'm going to work on the carnelian. And then back to the dragon stone. So here I, I'm just placing the wand above it and going over the crystals. Although you, you can also tap the stones as well if you want. So tap. So that just helps to connect them, but you have to be careful that you don't move the crystals out of place. So we're back into the middle, then to the carnelian. See that crystal moved then? This is why I usually don't tap them. I just wanted to show you. And then back. So then you would, once you've activated them, you, you want to place your intention into the crystal grid. So just by placing the stones in this, in this order, just by placing the gemstones there, you've already begun to set your intention. But you then enhance this by saying a prayer or affirmation such as I invoke the light of the divinity within I am a clear and perfect channel and spirit is my guide I invoke the light of the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel and spirit is my guide. If you want to if you want to state a specific deity or even archangel maybe, then feel free to do that. So I will choose say at Archangel Michael he's a very protective deity so he he will help us with the protection grid I invoke the light of the divinity within I am a clear and perfect channel and Archangel Michael is my guide thank you thank you thank you I invoke the light of the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel. Sent. <laughs> I am a clear and perfect channel. And Archangel Michael is my guide. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, let's go again. I invoke the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel. And Archangel Michael is my guide. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I invoke the light 
the light of the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel and Archangel Michael is my guide. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now set your intention, hold your intention for a moment. <sighs> Breathe. Spirit, please give us protection. Archangel Michael, please give us your protection. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I invoke the light of the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel. And Archangel Michael is my guide. I invoke the light of the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel. And Archangel Michael is my guide. I invoke the light of the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel. And Archangel Michael is my guide. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, this time, we'll do it one more time, but we'll go from each. So this time I'm going to go from Dragonstone to Centre, to Carnelian to Centre, and then back to Dragonstone. Okay, so let's do this. I call upon the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel. And Archangel Michael is my guide. I invoke the light of the divinity within. I am a clear and perfect channel and Archangel Michael is my guide. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I call upon the powers that be, please grant us your protection. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grant us this protection for as long as we need it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And there you have it. There's a protective crystal grid. Alright. I really hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions at all, then please let me know. I will reply to all of the messages, but I can't guarantee that I'll be able to answer every single question, but I will try my best. Thank you all for watching Witches and Pagans. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, then please show your appreciation by hitting the like button, the subscribe button, and please check out some of the other videos because there's many more videos like this one and there will be many more to come. So please join the Black Cat Treasury family and stick around. So thank you so much. And I will be back for the fifth installation of the Protection Magic series within the next week or so. So please do check back. And for now, I'm going to wish you all brightest blessings and namaste. Farewell.